Hello and welcome to Web Development 101 with Alex Merced. On this show, we'll talk about all the basic concepts of web development in a way that anyone can understand, whether it's front-end web development, back-end web development, and full-stack web development. If you're new to web development, I recommend listening from episode one to understand all the concepts from beginning to end. You can also learn more about my own personal projects over there at Alex Merced Coder. Com. Thank you. For- hey, everybody. This is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com, and you're listening to Web Development 101. And today, I want to talk about computer science. Um, the reason being is that what a lot of, I think, people who are self-taught developers don't realize sometimes is that while having great programming skills and a solid portfolio can oftentimes get you an interview, it's your ability to talk about programming concepts and theory and whatnot that'll win, that'll get you the job. The reason being is that developers want to know that you understand sort of common practice, uh, the reason why people do things that they do, uh, because they don't want you repeating the same mistakes that have been made a thousand times by people who just don't know, okay, this is where things came from. This is why it's always important to know the history of the industry. This is why I highly... I, I like listening to history of like programming languages and in different aspects of why the industry is where it is. One, it gives you appreciation for what's been tried and hasn't been tried, which uh, makes you a, a better programmer. But two, it also gives you the knowledge because in interviews, you have to be able to communicate that you understand what you're talking about. It's like, great, you can program the code, but do you understand these certain concepts that'll prevent you from creating bad code? Um, with really ambitious projects. So what I'm going to do over the next several um, episodes is just talk about some computer science concepts, some basic concepts that oftentimes come up uh, during interviews. These are things that, you know, during the interview they may ask you to go right up on a whiteboard. Um, They may ask you to explain. And worst case scenario, actually ask you to sort of model and code. And even when that happens, it's not necessarily always about whether you are able to actually code it out, like code out a sorting algorithm or a binary tree. Uh, but it's about you understand the concept enough that you can get started and, you know, move along the process. Like what they are looking to see that one, you're willing to solve problems, you understand how to solve problems, and you're not scared to solve problems. Okay. So that's essentially what's kind of going on um, in this. So first, we're going to talk about algorithms, specifically sorting algorithms. And the idea is that these are instructions for how computers sorts data. And the reason why that's important is because one of the things you're going to spend a lot of time doing is going through data. And to find data faster, you want to sort it. And when you sort it, you don't want to spend too long sorting it because, again, memory time matters. Efficiency is a big deal. Okay? You ever had to sit there and went to a website where you have to kind of wait for it to load or when use a program that kind of locked up your computer because it basically ran so inefficiently. Well, we don't want that in your programming. So you need to understand these concepts. So the first, so sorting algorithms are ways to a computer, and then again, most of the time you're not programming these things. These things are kind of already built into. These are things that kind of underlie how everything that you're probably currently using works. So, but the best way to learn is to first learn the, the bad sorting algorithms, the one that, that people never use. Um, at least in programming. You probably have used it physically as a person because they're intuitive. But the first one is called a bubble sort. And in a bubble sort, basically what you're doing is you're just taking a look at the first thing in a list of items, comparing it to the second thing. And if the second thing is bigger or smaller, you know, depending on how you're ordering it, you swap them. Okay? And then you just keep going down the list of items and keep comparing the next two items. But when you get down to the end of the list, everything's still not in order. So you have to go back to the beginning and do it again. So then what happens, worst case scenario, you may end up having to go through the whole list of items several times. And then, you know, that's not very efficient. If you want to see a visual representation of this, check out my YouTube channel. I, you know, drew a bunch of numbers and a bunch of cards and actually physically show you how this all works. Uh, Two is insertion sorting. So basically what happens here is imagine like you're drawing on a deck of cards. Okay, and every time you pull out a new card, you figure out where where should go among the cards in your hand. Now the problem with this is you're resorting the whole hand every single time you draw a new card, which you know gets redundant and inefficient. So again, we do those all the time because it's just physically an easy way to do it. 
But from a computational ways, computers end up taking a lot longer. It's not as efficient. Then there's bucket sorting. Now, bucket sorting is especially used when you have a good variety of data and you want to break it up into categories. So let's say I have a bunch of data of all sort of public service workers and I want to separate uh, police, firemen, and administrative workers. So then I create three buckets and I start breaking them down into those three buckets. Okay, and that makes it a lot easier because then I can sort those individual buckets. Um, then there is a quick sort. Now, a quick sort is pretty interesting. Okay, so what happens here is you chop the data set in half. And then you chop the data set in half again. And you just keep, so even though it's unsorted, so everything's out of order. So you just take whatever the middle item is and chop it. And then you just keep chopping it until you get them down to pairs of like two. Okay, because then once you get them down to pairs of two, you can compare the two. And then you switch it, and then you start, you know, you keep merging these pairs of two, but every time you merge a pair of two, instead of like, let's say, I have three and four and one and two, so bait, well, actually, let's say it's four and three, two and one, they're out of order. Well, I take a look at the two and one, I switch them around, one and two. Then I take a look at three and four, I switch them around, it's three and four. And then I take a look at the two of them combined, and it's easy enough for me to, to kind of piece them together. So basically it reduces, by chopping it in half, you're reducing the total amount of swaps um, and calculations you have to do because you're breaking it up. Um, so that's a pretty cool way of doing it. That's generally how it's done. The other very popular method is called a... Um, what is the word I'm looking for? I think it's merge sort. That's um, actually, I think the merge sort is the one we just talked about, where you're merging them back together. Okay, technically, the other one I want to talk about is quick sort. So merge sort is when you chop them in half, 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 and then you have the merge sort. I mean, the quick sort. <laughs> uh, the quick sort is basically what you do. So instead of chopping things in half, you're chopping into three. So basically, you would take sort of the middle number, and then you would separate everything that's on the other side of the, 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 that index number versus all the numbers. So basically all the numbers that are bigger than the index number, all the numbers that are smaller than the number goes on the other side. They may still be out of order, but now you're, 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 you, you, you reduce your categorization. You're just saying, hey, everything's either one side or the other. Then you take a look at one side and go, okay, now let me go find the middle number in this side and then get, once again, separate everything that's bigger than that number versus everything that's smaller than that number. And you keep doing this, and eventually, you're sorted. And the thing is that by doing this categorization, you're reducing the amount of future swaps you have to do. So basically, every time you, 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 you do that sort of triple, that sort of triple chop, you save yourself some time. So that's why these things have a, a big O notation of uh, N, law, N log N, which just means that basically the more you do it, the faster it gets. Okay, so basically you, um, and I'll do a separate episode on big O notation. But those are sorting algorithms. They're just different ways of breaking down a large list of items of data pieces and trying to get down to sort of what is, uh, what is uh, at the end there. So uh, my name is Alex Merced from alexmerced.com. Have a great day. I'll see you guys next week.